blessing it is to uh, two Sundays in a row come and uh, share the, the word of God. And it's just nice to know that Pastor Doug is uh, enjoying this time of vacation and uh, just being able to fill in is a great privilege. And at the same time, it's um, um, a great responsibility. Thank you, uh, worship team. Now, believe it or not, Mr. and Mrs. Carlson is in the house. So, uh, so we welcome the new couple, the, the new young couple. We greatly enjoyed your wedding uh, two weeks ago, and uh, uh, let's continue having more weddings. How about that, huh? I hope you had a, a we hope you had a great great time uh, in uh, in Europe, and, and thank you for leading worship here, Grace. As you remember, last week I mentioned that many buildings that look strong on the outside develop cracks and some collapse due to the foundation being weak. Uh, just a, a, a brief uh, reminder that bad foundations produce bad buildings. It is no different with building a blessed family. Uh, if you don't have the right foundation, the family could tumble. Didn't the Lord Jesus himself give us the parable that we studied last week? The house on the rock stood firm because it had the right foundation, and the one in the sand collapsed when the storms of life came. Therefore, it is important that the right foundations are placed to build up our families, to build up our marriages, to build up our kids in the fear of the Lord. The need for this message is great because Christian families are under great attack. I don't think that we need to look far and long to know that uh, families, the enemy is attacking the families from everywhere, from starting from the government, even sometimes even from within the church. <clears throat> and we see it everywhere. From the attack to the, of the unborn, to the open attack against biblical definition of marriage. Um, I would have never thought that 30 years ago, we would be, 30 years later, trying to figure out what is a marriage. Nowadays, even the government is trying to change the definition of what it is. One man, one woman for life. Satan has declared open war against our families and our homes. And in many cases, he's winning and winning big time. Most people we know want to have a blessed family. I have yet to uh, meet a family that says, I really want my family to fail at anything we do. I have yet to uh, get to know even a young couple say, I'm going to uh, get married and I'm going to try to fail as mostly uh, as best as possible. Have you ever met anybody do that? We want to have great families to, that they will glorify and honor God. Now notice that I, I mentioned blessed family and not a perfect family. First of all, because there is no such thing as a perfect family. Okay? <clears throat> there is no such thing as a perfect family. But, as a people of faith, knowing that God wants to bless His, His people, the church, back in the Old Testament, what God wanted to bless also the people of Israel. I would like for us to consider this message, which is <clears throat> the foundations for building a blessed family. Follow me as we read the text for today, which is found in Psalm 27. Let us pray before we uh, do the, the reading of the text. Father, what a great day to be able to meet as a body of believers and uh, commemorate communion and just worship you and bring you the offerings and our tithes. Father, you are the only one who deserves our glory and our honor. We recognize that we fail many times, especially when we try to live our lives without you at the center of our lives, Father. Thank you because you continue to guide us, you continue to, to exhort us through the word, through the preaching, through Bible uh, 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 memorization. May your Holy Spirit continue to uh, give us that sense of need for you and the hunger and thirst for you, Father. As we're here today and we open your word, may we not just hear your word, but apply it to our lives and live according to it. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Psalm 27. 
reads as follows. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, the children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior. And so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them, but shall speak with the but shall speak with their enemies in the gates. Now, just as a as a background to this psalm, the author of Psalm 127 is Solomon. Now, do you remember Solomon is also the author of Ecclesiastes? And pretty much the twelve chapters of Ecclesiastes, there were doom and gloom. You know, about uh, vanity of vanities, you know, uh, all this vanity, trying to make life sense without uh, or under, under the sun or, or away from God, is, it's all vain. Why even bother doing this and all that? And uh, I don't know, but I think we would agree that as you read the 12 chapters of Ecclesiastes, if you were, if you were depressed, <laughs> pretty much you would finish probably even thinking suicidal thoughts, thinking, yeah, why even work? Why even, you know, uh, uh, put any effort? In this, but Solomon also wrote <clears throat> these uh, this this psalm, and in a way, this psalm is the flip side of the book of Ecclesiastes, which is about the emptiness or vanity of living life without God at the center. Ecclesiastes teaches us that without God, work and life and home they lose their meaning. The Psalm one twenty seven teaches us that you can rest in God's blessing because all that you need comes from God. The first part of the psalm deals with God's blessing and provision in your work. And the second part deals with God's blessing and provision in your home. Now, the first foundation, how do we want God to bless our family? First one is the family is blessed when it recognizes, listen up, and when it recognizes that the Lord builds the house. He is the one who provided salvation for us, as we noticed last, last, uh, last year, last week. He is the one who provides a family for us. Remember, and I'm going to try to uh, uh, paraphrase this verse, but in Spanish it says, uh, El que haya esposa, haya el bien de Dios. He who finds a wife, finds the benevolence of the Lord. I think that's how, how it would be translated. And, and, you know, God is the one who provides uh, marriage. God is the one who established the sanctity of marriage and provides the marriage as a, as a symbol of Jesus, um, uh, the head of the church and his bride. What a great uh, image. But you know, the enemy wants to destroy and say, no, that doesn't work. Let's redefine it. Let's, let's just let's make that a lot of deadbeat dads just run away from the responsibilities. But I trust that each father who is here, each male who is here is recognizing that their importance in the home is vital. Family is blessed when it recognizes that the Lord builds the house. This text is a warning against an attitude of self-sufficiency. Without God, your work will be empty, frustrating, useless, and in vain. Many times, as we've, uh, my wife and I, uh, we, we've counseled, uh, counseled, or, you know, giving uh, instruction to our kids, and you know uh, when they get when they're very, very little, you feel comfortable because you figure you know okay we're going to church, and there's no problem. When they reach the teenage years, you, you start questioning, did I raise them right? <laughs> Why is he having these thoughts about you know oh man I don't want to go to church or you know I guess Enrique is not here so I'm gonna have him have to use him as a guinea pig, you know. But um, pretty much when they're very little, you feel confident of being a parent. When they get to grow older. You start thinking, wow, did I did right? Did I instruct them in the word correctly? Did I have sufficient devotion time as a family with them? Well, a family is blessed when it recognizes that it is God. True, we need to put effort in family devotions and spending time with them and instructing them. But far be it from us trying to be self-sufficient and thinking that God uh, that, that without God we can do everything. Uh, l- uh, listen to what uh, Hebrews 4.3 says, For every house is built by someone, 
the author of Hebrews says, but he who builds all things is who? Is God. He created marriage in the, in the um, Garden of Eden. One man, one woman. Forever. Did they have a perfect home? No. Remember who was the first uh, person murdered? It was within the two brothers, siblings. Talk about a, a marriage made in the Garden of Eden. Surely Satan wants to destroy the marriage. But brothers and sisters, we should continue to uphold the basis by which God wants us to live. Recognizing that the Lord builds a house. Basically, Solomon says, don't start anything without God. Whether you are starting maybe college years, or a new project, a new job, or a new relationship. Whether you're starting a, a new marriage. Whether you're starting to rear kids. Remember that it is God who works in the hearts of man. Don't do it without God. Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Your thoughts will be established. Whatever you attempt to in life, commit it to God from the very beginning. Because if God is not in it, then God's blessing will not be on it. He, but either way, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. As you um, continue in your marriage, as you raise your kids, one of the greatest blessings that you can have is asking God to bring the blessing upon them. Uh, a couple of uh, years back, I remember <clears throat> um, there was this family who, uh, this lady, she would put her three kids on the bus. They were going either to uh, elementary, to uh, pre-K or elementary because they were really little. And, 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 and she... You could tell that she was a, a woman of faith, uh, not necessarily maybe the same religion, but you know, right before the kids would run up to the bus, they would just come back and they would run. And I thought, okay, we're going to see a big uh, showdown of they don't want to go to school. But you know what they did? They ran to their mom and they put their forehead right in front of her, and and, and she and she gave them a blessing, okay. And I thought, you know, okay, that's neat. That's not awesome. You know, she's, she did the sign of the cross. You know, she, she obviously, she was raised Catholic. But that was an everyday thing. And, and we might think, well, you know, that's kind of silly, you know, blessing. Of course, our kids are blessing. But, you know, isn't it true that God asks us not to curse but to bless? Isn't it true that God wants us to say, honey, today I want I wanna God to bless you. Isn't it true that it's easier for me to complain more about my wife than ask, may God bless you and that, that I will be able to understand you after 24 years? Which, by the way, yeah, November will be 24 years of marriage. Yeah, that's why she left me for a month. Wow. She's in Mexico. Remember last week, the, the Leaning Tower of Pizza? That's how I feel this week because my better half is, is in Mexico and, and my kids are enjoying my, my food. I think, I think. I really miss her, but she'll be back on Saturday. God created marriage, and unless the Lord builds the house, it is in vain. It is in vain. So unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. So it is not just about establishing a home, but not letting it go on cruise control. How many marriages come after 10, 20 years saying, you know, I used to love her. When we got married, the honeymoon, everything was great. We had kids. But now, I don't love her anymore. Maybe the marriages went in cruise control. They didn't invest time in, in their marriage. An interesting illustration. Uh, uh, the other day, I was looking at uh, the fact that, remember the Great Wall of China? Uh, they said that you could actually see it from satellite up. That's how big it is. But interesting uh, uh, characteristics is that the Great Wall of China was built to defend China from outside invaders, you know, keeping it secure. The wall is over 4,000 miles long and 20 feet high. Its width range from 12 to 40 feet in places. That's about as secure as you can get. But the Mongols still invaded into China. They still conquered. Now, you figure, why? And you know how? 
They did. They didn't breach the walls. The walls were good, but they simply bribed the guards. In Spanish, they call it le dieron mordida. They gave them a bite. The enemy knows that a God-fearing marriage will give glory to God Himself. And the enemy knows that if he continues to let purposeful, blessed marriages have kids and be a glory to him, he's going to have a harder time. So out in the community, like you'll see a high percentage of marriages, single parent homes. Could it be that that is one of the troubles that... Uh, that uh, uh, people have in trying to come to church or in, or in trying to challenge them to seek God? Could it be that many marriages are just in cruise control? Could it be also that even our spiritual lives are in cruise control? You know, and say, well, we really don't need to be that fanatical about reading scripture or about worshiping God. Why worship God? Why do everything we do on Wednesdays, on Saturdays, practice? Because we, we recognize that God deserves even more of that. He deserves our lives. He deserves our marriages, our kids. He deserves for, uh, for us to be able to share that with many other people. If God doesn't build a house, it's all in vain. Secondly, the family is blessed when the husband takes his place as head of the house. And I know, especially we're living in a day and age where there's a lot of uh, 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 contrary thoughts about this verse, maybe because... Uh, especially within the, uh, Latin American uh, countries, they, they've, uh, there's a lot of, uh, they call it machismo, male chauvinists, you know, people, males who, are, who have dominated women and try to put her under the foot. But this verse is about the order that God has placed for the husband, it says, is the head of the wife and also Christ is head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. So listen, the family is blessed when the husband takes his place as the head of the household. Not as a dictator, listen up. As a person who's willing to defend his wife, to provide for her. We could do that. We said, well, I could work, but we could turn workaholics and neglect our wives. That is not what it's saying. Provide stability, instruction. You would be surprised how jumping with joy your, 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 your wife would be on the instant saying, Okay, family, are we going to have family devotions today? Maybe the kids might say, Oh, Dad, come on. Saturday, the family devotions. Yes. The influence of a father in a spiritual life in a family is very positive. A family is blessed when the husband takes his place on the head as head of the household. Someone once said, Labor without God cannot prosper, and labor against God will surely fail. You need to keep God in, in everything you do. That's why the book of James instructs us, if it is the Lord's will, if it is the Lord's will, He will live, we will live and do this and do that. Everything we do, if it is God's will, God will permit us to do it. Basically, it comes down to this. Do you expect your work to succeed because of you? Or do you expect to succeed because of what God is doing in your life? Are you trusting in your self-sufficiency or are you trusting in God Almighty to bless your kids and you being intentional about saying, Son, listen, remember when we do communion? There was a time in my life when I didn't know Christ. But when I came to know Christ and I surrendered myself, I recognized the importance of communion. And that, you, that decision, you need to make it. Being intentional. Being intentional. The family is blessed when prayer is a priority in the family and it brings to mind a man by the name of Cornelius. Do you remember a Cornelius? <clears throat> uh, he used to be a devout religious person. Uh, but it, it's interesting that on this verse it says that he, uh, not just him, but even his household, it says a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people, and pray to God always. Now, uh, he was praying to God that God would reveal to him, you know, just he wanted to get to know God, him and his household. And then that's when Peter uh, received this revelation 
about Peter going there and sharing the gospel. And, and you're thinking, is it important for me to pray, not just yourself, but even with your, with your family? Not just yourself, but even with your kids? Sometimes we would intentionally uh, leave the door open when my wife and I uh, uh, would pray, especially like when they were little, so that they could, uh, so that they could just pass by and see us praying. Now, uh, you might say, are you trying to do show? No. So that they could understand that the importance of prayer within a marriage, the importance of prayer in devotions, family devotions, would be there. Because sooner or later, one, once our kids get older, and they're off, maybe living in a different state, that they would remember that there's a foundation upon where to build. Who knows? Maybe today you might be thinking, well, I haven't thought it like that, but maybe this week I can start with my young ones having devotions. Maybe you're in this congregation right now and saying, well, I'm past those years. And uh, I'm already retired. I have no kids. And that's fine. Listen. As a grandfather, you have a great legacy in also instructing your grandkids when they come to visit, you know, and just saying, Johnny or uh, Eddie, who knows? <laughs> and you can say, have you considered the power of God in your life? Have you considered what God can do for you? A family is blessed when the children are raised in the fear of the Lord. Listen to what it says. In verse, 13, in, in, in verse 3, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the bands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Solomon uses the, the illustration of a warrior with arrows. And they, when you go out into war, you need arrows to be able to, to defend yourself. And, and he uses that imagery saying, listen, children are a heritage. They're a blessing. They're a gift. A family is blessed when children are raised in the fear of the Lord. Because first of all, they're a heritage. In verse 5 it says that blessed is the man. Blessed is the family who has them and directs them in the right paths. 24 years ago, as I just mentioned, my wife and I um, got married and I think if, if we would have sat down and thought our lives through and say, okay, how many kids are we going to have? Coming from a typical Hispanic family, we'd be like, okay, seven or eight, <laughs> or something like that. But no, my wife would have said, no, no way. <clears throat> okay. So um, uh, we never sat down thinking, okay, because remember, God is the one who gives them as a gift. How about if God would have not given us kids? Will we still give glory and honor to God? Yes. He's the giver of life. He's the only one who could do that, right? And, and, but by God's grace, He blessed us with four kids. I actually wanted five. My mom, my wife said no. Right? She said, you're not having them because you don't know how, how hard it is. I said, well, um, but they're a blessing. Especially uh, when you're raising them and just instructing them. And, they're also a headache, you know, especially when they reach teenage years. We were there. We, we gave our, our parents headaches, and that's fine. Because when you're trusting that God is building your home, you're not going to stress out about that. You're going to instruct them and, and guide them. Uh, uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, this verse does not guarantee that he will be a Christian for the rest of his life. You're teaching him the way. You're praying for him that God will, will work in his heart. Remember, it is God who works in the hearts of man. And you're just praying that God would open his eyes so that he can see the, ma the, the glory of God and the salvation and that he will come. It is definitely the desire of, of every parent for the, his kids to come. But it is in God's time. So don't give up on your kids. I, I recognize many times we tend to look negatively on everything bad that they do than looking the positive things that they do have. 
Isn't it true that we usually think the negative and, and, and we don't see the positive things that God is doing in their lives? Bringing blessing on them. God wants to bless His people and bring revival through them. Listen to what um, Isaiah 44, 3 and 4 says, For I will pour out water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offsprings. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. Oops, I thought uh, there was another verse there, but they will spring up among the grass and willows by the water courses. So, and you might be saying, yeah, but this was about the prophecy of Israel. That was the chosen people of, of God. That was a, pro- a prophecy for them. True. But let me ask you, doesn't God also want to bless our next generation? Right? Doesn't God want to say, yes, I want you to be fruitful. The other day I was, um, I was reading about the, the generation of Jonathan Edwards and about how his descendants, many of them were senators, many of them were, were missionaries and pastors, and all, all the way up to the 20 or, or, or 30 uh, uh, generations, there were people that were blessed in how God blessed his, uh, his next descendants. And, and, and this is not about trying to outdo each other, but Lord, if you bless me with salvation coming from, from the type of family that I came from, that I could count back three or four generations about grandfather uh, or grandfather or great-grandfather about being alcoholics and doing this and doing that, and because of your mercy, I have been blessed. Oh, Father, may my third or fourth generation be blessed and that they would be, you know, uh, God-fearing people, that they would be a blessing to the community, that they would be able to be used so that many more will come to Christ. That should be our, our goal. Because the mission field is also here. If God wants to provide that kind of blessing to the people of Israel, surely God wants to provide a blessing for us also. It would be like the same as in Psalm 1, where it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and bring forth his fruit in a season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Children are one way that God provides for us but they are not the only way. Whatever provision you have comes from the Lord and He wants you to learn to rest in His blessing. So the family is blessed when there's prayer. The family is blessed when there's devotions in the family. The family is blessed when we recognize that it is not about us, but it is about His glory. Psalm 127 is a beautiful psalm that teaches us to rest in God's blessing at work and at home. All that we need comes from God. The house that brings us protection, the city that gives us security and stability, the food and daily provisions we need to sustain life, and the children to support and protect us in our old age. We can bring none of this about by ourselves. We are totally dependent upon God. So as we finish, the family, the last foundation is the family is blessed when they are part of the extended family which is the local church especially for the families who are rearing kids make it a a priority at all possible come to church every Sunday not because pastor Doug is going to get mad or I'll get mad if I don't see you but because remember our kids learn by example our kids say sure dad yeah we go to church as long as there's no Super Bowl Sunday. Sure, Dad. Oh, which, by the way, today is kind of like a, the Spanish Super Bowl Sunday. Today, the Women's World Cup is being played. <laughs> and I think USA is going to win, Netherlands. There is uh, Copa Oro, which is Gold Cup, USA against Mexico. I saw a couple of shirts out there. Uh, and there is uh, Copa America in the South, South America. So, so today will be the equivalent of Super Bowl Sunday for the Latin America. <laughs> but make it a priority regardless of whatever the world is celebrating out there regardless of whatever worldwide event that's happening out there the day of the Lord is the day to worship God the day of the Lord is to make it a priority that even though it's really nice and dad wants to go play golf no, 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 no golf can be 
for Monday. The Lord's day is to come and worship and bring praise to God. You will be surprised about the example that you will give your kids. Because you can teach them all you want about it's important to go to church. But they, they hear our actions more than they hear our words. Teach them by example. Say, devotion time is devotion time. Prayer time is prayer time. Coming to the Lord, to, uh, coming to church as an extended family is one of the most blessing things. So most people we want, we know, want to have a blessed family. We want to succeed. How are you doing in your spiritual life? How are you doing in your marriage? And you instructing your kids. Have you recognized that it is God who works all things for good to those who love Him? God is doing a mighty work. As we walk and leave this magnificent sanctuary, that we would understand that the foundation upon we build is what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. Let us pray. Father, your word says that unless the Lord builds a house, the builders labor in vain. Your word says that children are a heritage, heritage from the Lord. And that blessed is the man. Blessed is the marriage. Blessed is the family that continues to trust in you, Lord. May we never let the secular determine what we believe. But may we always as a church trust in the Lord, trust in your word that you will bless the next generations. That as we worship here in this, in this magnificent sanctuary that was dedicated more than a hundred years ago, oh Lord, you have blessed the generations since, since the church started here. Father, and may those next generations will continue to enjoy the preaching of the word from this pulpit. Because it is in your name that we pray in your glory. I ask that you bless each family here. In Christ Jesus, amen.